Somebody said to you, I'm thinking about joining Fijo. Just look at that camera. Yep. What would you tell them? Uh, I would encourage you absolutely to come along. It's just, it literally is a blast. So, um, yeah, it's just great for meeting new friends who just love music as much as you do. And it just gives you a whole new musical rhythm. It's just absolutely wonderful. Thanks very much. here by Vicky, um, who's uh, one of our star members of FIJO2. Uh, Vicky, how long have you been in the band? Uh, a year. A year or say, okay, now, just, why do you come? Just because I like to, I like playing the trumpet, and I just find it really fun. You find it fun? That's good. And um, what's different about FIJO compared to anything else you do? Because you don't get in trouble if you play the wrong note. <laughs> Say that again. You, you don't get in trouble if you play the wrong notes. So you're learning that the stakes are cool? Yeah. Absolutely. And you keep playing like that. Great.
Alfie, how long have you been playing in Fido? About two or three years. About two or three years. Okay, so what, what difference has playing in Fido done to your playing the guitar? Well, I feel like the chords now feel a little more confident, stronger player. Confidence, more strong player. And what's it like just playing in the band there? It's fantastic. It's the best thing I've done. I'm joined here by uh, my friend and colleague Pete Petrie, who works uh, on the training band. Uh, Pete, what, what effect, first of all, has playing jazz had in your life uh, and as a musician? Well, it's something that I've, I've always enjoyed from an early age. Uh, my uh, first teacher was a, a great jazz, uh, jazz trombonist, Pat Strachan. Oh yes, Pat, yeah. And he, he did his best to uh, um, show me everything that, that tried jazz had yeah. to offer something that I got dragged along to watch every Saturday lunchtime, but it's just had a huge effect, yeah. changed a lot. Okay, now listen, you're a, you're a very experienced teacher in the classroom, uh, teaching kids in school, but also in classical orchestras. Yeah. What what has it done to you um, professionally, coming along here on Thursday night, working with kids, doing improvisation? It's just shown me what you can uh, achieve, um, as opposed to what we do every day in the school, it's freed up the children so that they enjoy it so much more. It shows them what you can do without dots, without bits of paper, and it just lets them be more creative rather than saying you have to play this at that speed. And, you know. Now, if any of your colleagues uh, were, watch, were watching this and were a bit wary about the children coming in to find you, what would you say to them? Don't be. <laughs> <laughs> Why? You know, so yeah. Why? It, it's just it's the best education you can give a youngster because they they're, you know, they're literally like sponges. They've got no, there's, there's no um, problem with them trying something yeah. or they can do with that, like, oh, yeah. that's wrong, don't do this, don't do that, you have to play this. It's, it's just freedom to express themselves. Thanks very much, Pete. Oh, yeah. it's a pleasure. This is a piece that I wrote specifically for the Fidel players. It's called Shifting Sands. And it's just a kind of just laid back groove thing where we've got solos in it. It's essentially four parts, like a soprano, alto, tenor, bass which is split up around the band with trumpets, French horn, trombone, violin, clarinet, and two altos. But it'll work with any instrumentation. The important thing is, when I count it off, everybody gets in the groove with it. Are you ready? OK, here you go. One, two, one, two, three.
thing going with them? You know, you, do you find that they encourage you? Yeah, they do. And do you find the tutors encouraging? Yes. Great. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Carlo, you and I have been friends for a long time. We've been working together for a long time on Fido. It consumes a large part of our lives. What's, what's, it, what's it like being involved in this? Well, it's absolutely fantastic because you meet children from a very young age up to very, very proficient in terms of their instrumental ability. And, um, you know, you get to see the whole range of uh, musicianship as they develop over the years, which is a fantastic thing to actually see. Yeah, because we've seen some of our former players make it to be professional as right. role models. That's right. That's right. Uh, what, do you think the, what do you think the average person, the you know, young star in the band, gets out of coming here on a Thursday night? Because they come. Yeah, it's, it's a difficult one to answer, but I suppose they're getting something that they won't get anywhere else. I mean, that's the first thing. So what is that thing? Well, I think it's groove. Groove. <laughs> <laughs> I, think you'll, I think they learn how to groove yeah. and, and go with the music, but then actually go to love the music and enjoy it, which is the most important thing. They get really enjoyment out of it once they get over that initial stage of wondering what's going on. Can I ask you, uh, you're a top class struggle player. What has it, what impact has you know playing the jazz, you know, teaching it on here you know, with Fajr had on your your own playing as a musician? Well, it's, it's quite it's, it's quite a, uh, made quite a difference to my playing. I've had to rethink quite a lot of things since coming to Fajr. Is that a good thing? Yes, of course it is. Yeah, because you never want to stop learning. You can't stop learning. It's, uh, there's too much to know. There's too much. I'm still learning the jazz tunes. Oh well, I didn't. That's what we want. Thanks very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks very much, Carlo. Tell me, 
You've been involved in Fiji quite a long time with your son, Sean, who's one of our trumpet players. What sort of a commitment have you had to make as a parent? Well, I was, I was trying not to make a commitment because I work full time in Edinburgh, yeah. but then you get drawn into the whole Fijo ethos. I feel to blame here, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to have to come up every night with Sean yeah. anyway. I yeah. got involved in the committee yeah. um, and I've been the treasurer for about three years now, so I just come and stay yeah. and hound people for their fees so that I can pay you. Right? <laughs> now, you mentioned a minute ago the Fijo ethos. What do you see the Fijo ethos as? I just think it's like a big community, like a big family, you know. Everybody's really friendly and, and you just can't help get pick up the vibe from you, of course, Richard, because you're wonderful, because obviously we first Please, met you. Don't stop. At the, <laughs> <laughs> at one of the very first sessions you were running in um, Kuras Abbey, yeah, me and Sean right. and yeah. our assistant yeah. Central yeah. King, yeah. and that's how we got into Fijo, and that was when I think Sean was a primary seven, so he's in fourth year now, so yeah. he's been here a long time. Okay, what could you say to parents? You know, if, you, if, you, if you're asked a question just now, right on that camera, could you tell that camera that what effect has Fijo had on your child that could that would have the same effect on other children? Sean just loves it. He comes every week. He insists on coming every week. He really hates to miss it. He gets very upset if he can't come to Fijo, and he just loves to play with Richard. He loves the improvisation angle of Fijo, whereas at school it's much more kind of structured, and he has to learn from music. But at Fijo, it's all about improvisation, having fun, playing with your peers, doing solos, and just having a great time. Thanks very much, Michelle.